This is the K-Bug 2000. The K-Bug 2000 is a compact, lightweight, portable, dual-sided fillet welder. It will handle straight barreled or gooseneck guns, and the controls control the weld contact on and off, as well as the travel. The digital control will give you precise stitch welding or continuous weld patterns. Let's look at some of the main features of the K-Bug 2000. Again, you can see it's a very small, lightweight machine designed to carry two welding guns to do both sides of a stiffener at the same time in the fillets. The main machine itself, you have the control module. It has all of your controls for cycle start and stop, your directions, your weld contacts on and off, your speed control, and all of your programming functions. The machine comes complete with a 15-foot power cord and two contactor cables that will hook into your trigger switches on your wire feeders. Four-wheel drive base, the wheels are rated up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Cable anchor to support the cables so they don't twist or bind during the travel. The inboard torch holder, micro slides, vertical and horizontal adjustment. Quick release gun clamp, you can set any angle you want. Also on the work side you have two follower arms which are adjusted against the vertical wall. By adjusting the trailing arm slightly longer than the lead arm, the machine will always be tracking towards the vertical wall which keeps it in place. Also on this side we have the outboard torch holder, fully adjustable vertical horizontal and again with micro slides so that once the rough adjustment into the corner is set you can fine tune the position of the gun before and during the welding. The work side also includes a spatter guard to protect the wheels and the handle serves not only for carrying but also as a magnet release that releases the majority of the holding power so that the machine is a little bit easier to transport in between jobs. Let's take a little closer look at the controls. The control station as you can see is very simple. You've got a cycle start button, a cycle stop button, initiation switches for the two weld contacts. You can weld with one or two guns, preset direction switch, and the speed control. The speed control knob also doubles as a programming knob. We'll get into that in a moment. The inputs are very simple. You've got a 110 or 220 input, depending on the model you have, and you also have two wire trigger switch cables to uh, control the wire feeder. Now we'll take a look at the background parameters to be set. This can be set by holding the start button while applying power to the machine. You'll notice the digital readout is flashing with a U and a value. This first setting is the setting for the puddle build. This will, is a time that you set before the tractor starts to move, the weld is actually welding, creating a puddle. This can be set in tenths of a second. We'll adjust that up to just one even second. Pressing the cycle start button a second time, you'll now see an N with the display flashing. This is the crater fill at the end of the weld cycle. The amount of time the weld will turn back on and fill a crater. Pressing the cycle start button a third time, You'll get an E, again with a value. This is the pause time between the end of the weld cycle and that time when the crater fill cycle will initiate. And we'll set that at just a half a second. So it'll just about fill the crater as soon as the cycle stops. We then just press the cycle stop button and the display will be constant. That's how you set the background parameters. Now we'll go over the parameters for the actual weld cycle. But before we do that, we'll take a quick look at the display and we'll notice we have one of the three LED lights lit. This tells us that we're in the cycle for stitch welding. If we wanted to do a continuous weld, we would simply hold the speed knob down for three seconds until all three LEDs flash three times. Now none of the LEDs are lit, so I know that I'm in continuous weld mode. In this mode, if you hit the cycle start, it will initiate your sequence, it will weld continuously, until you tell it to stop. Now we're going to go in and we're actually going to program in a stitch pattern. To do this, we'll simply hold the start button down again for three seconds. We'll see all three LEDs flash and one will remain on. The first LED, A, is the weld distance. And again, programmable down to a tenth of an inch in tenths. And we're going to set that for an even two inch weld. We'll press the speed control knob a second time and now the B LED is lit. This is the distance between welds 
where there's no welding occurring. This will run at high speed with no weld and we're going to set that at four inches. Pressing this speed knob the third time, this C LED is now lit and this is our total workpiece length. We can set that in, in inches, and after it welds that length, it will automatically stop the welding and the travel. Pressing it a fourth time, we now just have a solid display with no LEDs lit. That is our actual travel speed. And again, that can be preset or it can be adjusted on the fly while you're welding. We're now going to go ahead and install the welding guns, make all of our connections so we can do a live weld for you. We'll position the machine roughly in place on the workpiece so it give us a good reference point for our guns. We will go ahead and connect up our power cord, our two weld contact cables for guns one and two. Now for this demonstration, we're going to use both types of guns. We're going to use a straight barrel gun on one side, we're going to use a gooseneck gun on the other side. Show some of the versatility. Quick action clamp. All right. I'm going to tighten the gun holder up good and tight. Now I can take a quick look at my gun, I can see it's not quite in position, but again, I've got my micro slides here that I can do my fine adjustments with and I'll dial that in exactly where it needs to be before we start the weld. Now we'll set up a gooseneck gun on the opposite side. And again, I can kind of Make a quick adjustment here to get me close. Make sure my gun's clearing. Make sure the clamps are all tight. I'm now going to run, run the machine dry. I don't have the power sources, the welders on yet. So I'm just going to run it dry so that it does track into place to make sure that my gun positions are exactly the way I want them to be. Okay, now I know the machine is tracking as it will while I'm welding and I'll come in with my fine adjustments and make sure my wires are right where I want them to be on the outboard and the inboard guns. We can now secure all of our cables and wires up through the cable anchor. Put the one gun up through here, bring the other one up in. This gives us a good secure anchoring point so that in case there is any cable drag, uh, it won't affect the position of the guns. It is important for the operator to maintain vigilance on all the cables during the weld cycle, especially on long runs, um, to make sure they're not hanging up anywhere. Keeps them up out of the way, out of, off the heat, off the floor. Guns are in place, everything's hooked up, we're ready to strike an arc. The K-Bug 2000 is now set up and ready to perform dual-sided fillet welds. We've made all of our connections, our power sources and feeders are set and ready to go. Machine's in position, we've checked all of our sequence for our process. I'm now going to throw the enable switches on the arcs, double check my speed is set properly, my direction switch is set properly, and we are ready to strike the arc. Watch your eyes.
For more information on the K-Bug 2000 and other great Bugo products, visit us at bugo.com.